Every 10 years or so, there's always one company in the media space that's doing something revolutionary. And in this generation of artificial intelligence hype, Topaz Labs Video AI is an absolute game changer. When you check out their website, some of the examples might look too good to be real. That's actually a major criticism they often face, that their samples look like they're faked. Being someone deeply involved with video, I thought I needed to take a closer look at what video AI can do. So I decided to test out several of their AI models meant to help with image quality, video stabilization, slow motion, and upscaling. However, because the results were so good, I think it sparks an interesting debate. If these incredible videos and photos are technically artificially generated with AI, is it ethical to use Topaz Labs and say it's your own work? Let's dive in. For the following tests, I got my videographer friend David, an experienced gimbal operator, to help shoot some test footage, along with models Haley and Josh. David will be shooting 1080p using the Canon EOS M50 on the Ronin SC gimbal. I, on the other hand, will use a Canon R5C, handheld with a cheap shoulder rig, shooting 4K. In this test, I wanted to improve image quality of the 1080p footage and upscale it to 4K. I also wanted to see what it can do with out-of-focus video. The EOS M50 footage was great to test, because using a gimbal, a lot of times the focus wasn't tack sharp on Haley. So in this example, the iris model inside Topaz Labs should do the trick, as we want to improve the focus on her face and grab more details. Here's the initial 1080p footage manually upscaled for this 4K timeline. Now let's see how it looks with Topaz Video AI's iris model upscaling it to 4K. Oh wow, that looks really good for an image that was super out of focus. The iris face model literally fills in the face details using AI. It's not just sharpening the image, it's actually adding details that weren't there before and they look very real. Let's change the brightness in post and then we'll process it one more time with some manual settings and see what that does. Dang, that looks great to me. Details look real and amazing and the out of focus part is definitely usable now. So now that we have this smooth looking 4K gimbal video, let's compare it with some handheld footage that we've stabilized with Topaz Video AI. Stabilizer test. Typically I'm not a fan of carrying around a gimbal because they're tricky to use, especially for someone like me who's not an expert gimbal operator. So we're going to do a couple tests with handheld footage and see how that looks stabilized with Topaz. Here's the unstabilized footage. And here's the stabilized footage. Damn, that looks pretty smooth. Now let's compare it with the gimbal footage. I'm not seeing a huge difference in my opinion. The stabilized footage looks very, very smooth. Here's another shot we did, but this one has more advanced movement. And here's what it looks like stabilized.
And finally, we also try to replicate this shot with the gimbal. One more time, let's see the stabilized versus the gimbal. Honestly, the stabilized footage looks really great to me. With that being said, Topaz isn't perfect and may not work for every shot. I really wanted to test the limits of the software, so I inputted some extremely jittery and shaky footage to see what would happen. And as expected, this shot looks horrible even with Topaz Labs applied. It created a weird blur effect on a lot of the video. So that tells me if you, even if you don't have a gimbal and you want that smooth gimbal look with Topaz Labs, you probably still need either a shoulder rig or a really steady hands. So the question is, do we even need a gimbal anymore? With lenses and cameras now having in-body stabilization and Topaz Video AI to stabilize your video in post, I think you can get away with not using a gimbal. In my opinion, I probably won't be lugging around my gimbal anymore. On to the next test. Slow motion. Now, you can get slow motion within your editing program. For example, Premiere Pro has the optical flow option. But generally, I found the slow motion using Premiere Pro to be a bit choppy and unnatural because their algorithms aren't as polished as Topaz Video AI. Or at least that's what Topaz claims. So we're going to put that to the test. Here's the original footage shot at 30 FPS, and here's the footage in slow motion using Topaz Video AI. Damn, that is really smooth. For comparison, here's some other footage I shot at 120 FPS. I can't really tell a huge difference between these. I think Topaz did an insane job. It pretty much looks just as smooth as the video I shot natively at 120 FPS. Here we'll compare the slow motion from Topaz Video AI to the optical flow option on Premiere Pro. So while optical flow did a decent job, it just looks a little bit more warped and slightly choppier than the Topaz footage. If we crank this up even slower to a 240 frames per second, we finally start seeing where Premiere Pro starts doing a lot worse than Topaz. The Premiere Pro footage has strange artifacts and frames being created but the Topaz footage looks smoother than ever. This is huge for filmmakers. Slow motion footage always darkens your exposure, and therefore to compensate, you have to crank up the ISO. If you can avoid shooting in slow motion and can just process your video in Topaz Labs, you'll have much more flexibility with your video in post. Not to mention those times you just forget to change your frame rate, or when you need to capture audio with your footage as well. And if you really want to slow down your footage, Topaz can slow it down up to 16 times. That's insane. The amount of times I've been using Topaz in my workflow is incredible. I edited a documentary where I upscaled some archival footage so it didn't look horrible on a 4K timeline. I had a podcast where one angle was slightly soft focus, and I was able to fix it. I had footage I really liked shot at 30 FPS, and using Topaz, I was able to create a really smooth speed ramping effect. I had a wide shot I wanted to use for social media, but I wanted to increase the resolution and focus on only one of the guests in the video. I wanted to clip a social media video, but I lost the original file, so I saved the compressed version from YouTube, upscaled it, and removed the compression. 
With a few shots that ended up being super underexposed, I raised the exposure in post and then removed the noise with Topaz. I think the big question is, how will Topaz Labs and other artificial intelligence tools affect the future of creativity? And how ethical is it to use AI to create images and videos when these images are technically generated by scraping hundreds and thousands and even millions of other people's works? With AI tools like Midjourney winning a lot of photo contests, predictably a lot of traditional artists were outraged. You see similar complaints with Topaz Labs as the images and videos that you can generate now are impossibly high quality and very high detail. In fact, some are saying it takes away the skill level from a lot of these creatives who spent decades perfecting their craft. So what's going to happen when you can create the next IMAX level movie in the comfort of your own basement? The really unfortunate part is I do believe that jobs will be lost and industries will be killed. However, I do think that the boon for indie filmmaking and independent creators is going to be massive. Will you be picking up Topaz Labs for your next video?